YouTube. I'm here to do my prediction video for UFC Fight Night uh, Bisming vs. Gaslam. Sorry, this video is kind of late. I've had family over the whole Thanksgiving like week or two, and there's going to be more coming. <laughs> it's just my family's all around the world, and they're coming for the next couple weeks, so these videos are going to be kind of late. Um, before I start, I just want to say, you know, there's so many new Chinese fighters on this card that it's hard to predict a lot of these fights because I don't know how good these guys really are. The last time Chinese fighters won the UFC, they didn't do so well. These guys have better records than those guys, but it's still hard to tell because you don't know how good the competition they're facing is. So let's start at the bottom. The first fight is Cyril Asker versus Yao Zong Hu. And to me, Hu looks like he's okay. He's 3-0. But like I said, it's hard to tell how good he actually is just because we don't know how good the people are in China. Cyril Asker is 1-2 in the UFC. He's just okay. I'm going to go with Hu just because... I'm assuming they're going to try to get favorable matchup for these Chinese guys, so I think uh, who's probably going to win by decision or TKO late. Next is Wooly Buren versus Roland Dai. I'm going to go with Wooly. Both these guys look like they're well-rounded, but Roland Dai to me has not been that impressive. He, the biggest thing I can say about him is he can take a shot really well, but... He just looks like he's an okay striker, but I'm going to go with Wooly. He looks like he's well-rounded. And uh, I'm just going to assume he's a little bit better. Next is Yu Yan Yu Wu versus Gina Mazuna. I'm going to go with Wu. Both these chicks look like strikers. Wu just has a little bit better of a record. And she looks like she's a little bit more technical. So I'm going to say she wins by decision. Like I said, most of these fighters have never seen fights. So it's a really hard card to call. Next is Chase Sherman versus Shamil. I don't know how to say his last name. But this is the first fight where I know both of these guys... They're both primarily technical strikers. Shamil likes to go for takedowns, and he's got pretty good top game, and he's good, got good Kimuras and stuff like that. Um, I think Chase Sherman's a little bit too big and athletic to f get hit with those takedowns, and I think he the, his biggest problem was uh, pacing himself. But we've seen in his last couple fights, even though his last fight was really boring, I feel like he did a really good job of pacing himself, which was what he was trying to do. You know, he wants to be able to last the full fight and not burn out and get finished like he did in his first two fights. And you know, now he's won two or three in a row. I think he's going to win this one, which will be his third or fourth win in a row. He's just going to do what he did his last fight. He's just going to keep a good pace, be the better technical striker, and maybe he'll land a finishing shot. Maybe he won't. So I think he'll either win by decision or get a TKO in any of the rounds if he lands a good shot. Chase Sherman, I picked a win. Next is Yadong Song versus Bahara. I don't know how to say his last name, but I'm going to go with Song. Um, he looks like he's pretty solid. I think he's, you know, another guy who is well-rounded. And Bahara just looks like he's just a jiu-jitsu guy, and that's about it. I feel like if Song can keep it standing, he should be able to win by decision or TKO. Next is Kylin Curran versus Yan, uh, Xion Yan. And I'm going to go with Yan. They both look, they're both good strikers, but to me, Kylin Curran has a really hard time being consistent. I feel like Yan has a pretty good record. She looks like she's okay. I'm going to say she wins by decision. Next is uh, uh, Keenan Song versus Bobby Nash. And this guy does not look that great. Keenan Song is like 10 and 5, 10 and 6. I think that they were trying to give him an easy fight because Bobby Nash is 0 2. But both those fights were really good back and forth fights where he ended up losing. But he, he showed. That he's pretty skilled. I feel like Bobby Nash has very good striking and very good wrestling. And I think Bobby Nash is going to win this fight. Either by decision or knockout. Next is Zabit. And I'm going to try to say this guy's last name. It's like 15 letters. Versus um, Shaman Morris. And Zabit looked amazing in his UFC debut. I mean, he looked like he was not going to get hit by anything. He didn't want to get hit. He could fight really far. He looked like Anthony Pettis in all honesty. Like in his prime. Um... You know, overall, everywhere, like striking and grappling, that's the best way. He looked like, he just looked like Anthony Pettis. Um, I think that Zabit's just way more better, way more athletic, and I think he's going to be able to hit this guy whenever he wants, and he's either going to win by knockout or submission, either in the first round versus second round. Next, we got uh, Muslim, another guy whose name I, last name I can't say, versus Alex Garcia. And Muslim is an amazing striker. Both these guys are primarily just strikers. Muslim's got like 200 kickboxing fights, and he's like 12 and one or 13 and one the in MMA. His one loss was like a submission loss, really earning in his career. Um, to me, Alex Garcia's up and up. You know, some fights he looks decent, other fights he doesn't. I feel like because Alex Garcia likes to strike with all of his opponents, I think Muslim, you know, will probably be able to knock him out. I mean, Alex Garcia does go for takedowns if he feels like he needs to, but 
I just feel like Muslim should be able to keep this fight standing, and his way better striking is going to eventually land him the knockout. Next, we got Wang Yun versus Alex Caceres, and this is really hard, because I can tell that they really want Wang Yun. I think they want him to be the next big thing in China. I think he's like 15-0 and 0 or 15-1. and 1. Um, it, I'm going to go with Wang, just because he's a really good striker, but this is tough, because I don't know how good his ground game is. I feel like if Alex Caceres could get him to the ground, he's a very underrated jiu-jitsu guy, Alex Caceres, and he could submit him. So, it's tough. I'm going to go with Wang just because how good his record is and how many knockouts he has. But, like I said, if Alex Caceres could get this fight to the ground, you know, who knows what would happen. But, like I said, either way, I'm going to go with Wang. Next is Li Jing Liang versus Zach Ottawa. And, to me, Li Jing Liang is the best fighter fighting out of China right now. He's got to be the number one fighter from China. He's looked really good against every single guy he's fought, whether he's won or lost. And he's won the majority of his UFC fights. I think he's like 6-2 and two or something like that. And his two losses were both fights that were back and forth. So, to me, Zach Ottawa is one. You know, he's 2-1. and one. All of his fights went to the decision. They were all super close. He could argue his own three. I feel like Li Jin Leong is the much better striker of the two. I feel like his takedown defense is a lot better than Zach Ottawa's takedown offense. I also think Li Jing Leung could get back to his feet if Zach Ottawa did manage to take him to the ground. And if it's just a striking fight, Li Jing Leung is going to light Zach Ottawa up the whole fight. So I'm going to say Li Jing Leung either wins by decision or late knockout. Finally, we have Michael Bisbang versus Kelvin Gaslam. And I think this is smart for Bisbang because he really didn't take that much damage in the fight against uh, GSP. Aside from that one moment where he got dropped and got hit with a bunch of elbows, he wasn't getting hit that much after the first round. I feel like every time George took him down, he was landing more shots. I felt like Bisping was winning that fight up until... Like, he lost the first round, and then he was winning that whole fight up until he got finished. Um, you know, Kelvin Gastelum, you know, he was supposed to fight Anderson, so this isn't that different of a fight. I feel like Anderson, and the only difference is Bisping throws a much higher volume. But I feel like overall, their game is pretty similar. They're both strikers who like to stand and bang, who stuff takedowns and are really good at getting back to their feet. So... Overall, it's the same for Kelvin, but I'm going to go with Bisping. I feel like Kelvin is really hard to pick him because he's so small for this weight class. We saw in the Chris Weidman fight that, um, you know, he, he just looks like he's a foot shorter than most of these guys. And I feel like Bisping's going to be able to keep Gaslam at the end of his reach. And, you know, Gaslam likes to do that thing where he stands just outside the pocket and pop shot people. But because the reach difference is so big, I don't think he's going to be able to do that. And I just think Bisping's either going to win a decision or get a late finish. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Please like and subscribe, and happy Thanksgiving.